is a treasure chest. Understand the one God. You open up the treasure chest of other great gifts from this God. In Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Moses told that the daily diet of the Jews would be to hear every morning, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thousands, a few thousand of years later, Jesus is asked by some men, would you tell us what is the greatest commandment of all? The first and the greatest. He said, it is. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There is no disputing the one God doctrine. Throughout the Bible, thousands of times, over 7,000 times to be exact, the Bible refers to God as being one God, one Lord. I was ignorant sometimes, stubborn sometimes, wanted to do things my own way, made some mistakes, hello, had some hiccups, had some bumps all along the road. But at the end of the day, I'm standing here on the last Sunday of 2018 saying I've learned my lesson father your word is anointed i pray that you'll anoint every hear to hear every eye to see every spirit to receive in jesus name and let the church say amen. amen give the lord a hand clap of praise thank you for standing and you may have your seats in the name of the lord i've learned my lesson boy that was a phrase that i heard a whole lot growing up I don't know about you and I don't know what how things were in your household but but I can remember many many times growing up I was very mischievous I was very uh just always getting myself in trouble always uh I'll, well that's that's you Pastor Mary that's not me <laughs> and um, I've, I've always heard from mom and dad you know you learned your lesson yet and uh, you know and sometimes you know we we hear stuff that's I guess they, they, the old school family members, and I guess back home in Jamaica, they would always say, you know, he, don't, who, he who do not hear must feel. <laughs> and how the devil uh, finds work for, for idle hands. And, and so I've, I've heard these things many times, and, and it's at the times where I, 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 I messed up or I, I made a mistake or I hurt myself and I end up crying. It's, it's at those moments that you hear these phrases, or especially this one, did you learn your lesson and it just shows that there were many times before that that you know we receive instruction don't touch it don't do it don't go there behave sit down and all of these things but at the end of the day when we want to do what we want to do let's be honest today amen we we we, we learn the hard way so to speak and we can all assess and say to ourselves i've learned my lesson and as you and I stand at the closing of 2018, we can all make some honest assessments and say so much of our life is wasted on worry and regret. It's wasted on pain. It's wasted on heartaches. Of course, some of, these, uh, some of this is in inevitable and necessary, but we spend a lot of our days sweating over the little things Instead of being focused on what really is important in life. I suppose life lessons are called that for a reason. You need to experience life in order to learn the lessons. And the more life you experience, the more lessons you accumulate. Although some lessons must be learned through experience, you don't have to wait until you're old to become aware of what's truly meaningful and worthwhile. You simply need the curiosity and desire for self-awareness and personal growth. And once you learn the lessons, you can apply them in your life at any age and see the benefits to your happiness and well-being. It was the Apostle Paul who is the author of this book of 1 Corinthians. Corinth, an ancient city of Greece, was 
in many ways the most prominent Greek metropolis of Paul's time. Like many of the prosperous cities of the world today, Corinth was in intellectually arrogant, materially affluent, and morally corrupt. Sin of every kind flourished in these notoriously sensual city. In conjunction with Priscilla and Aquila and his own apostolic team, Paul founded the Corinthian church during the 18th month ministry at Corinth on his second missionary journey. The church was made up of some Jews, but mostly of ex-pagan Gentiles. And after Paul left Corinth, a variety of problems arose in the young church, requiring his apostolic authority and teaching by written correspondence and personal visits. The first letter to the Corinthians was written during his three-year ministry at Ephesus on his third missionary journey. Reports reached Paul at Ephesus about the problems at Corinth. Afterwards, a delegation from the Corinthian congregation delivered a letter to Paul requesting his inst instruction on a variety of issues. In response to the reports and this letter from Corinth, Paul wrote this letter. The Apostle Paul had two primary reasons in mind as he penned this epistle. Number one, to reprove and correct the serious problems in the Corinthian church which had been reported to him. These were disorders with the Corinthian church viewed lightly, but with Paul, he regarded it as serious sin. Secondly, to provide counsel and instruction on a variety of questions about which the Corinthians had written. These included both issues of doctrine and personal corporate conduct and purity. This epistle addresses the kinds of problems that churches experience when members remain carnal and do not decisively separate themselves from pagan society around them. Problems such as divisiveness and tolerance of sin like incest and, and sexual immorality in general and secular lawsuits between Christians and humanistic thinking about apostolic truth and conflicts over Christian liberty. It was the Apostle Paul also that instructs the Corinthians about matters related to celibacy and marriage, public worship, including the Lord's Supper and offering for the Jerusalem saints. And as we stand here, ladies and gentlemen, on this last Sunday of 2018, I believe that God's hand has been on our lives. Can I get a witness? And has kept you and I to this time and season and I firmly believe that God is setting you up to crush 2019. Uh, let, let me say that again. I, I just don't believe you're go, barely going to make it. I, I don't believe that you're just barely going to survive. But there is somebody that's going to walk in with an energy and with a force and with an anointing and a confidence that 2019 is mine. I, I, I'm positioning myself. I don't know about you, but... I'm not going to wait until the 31st of December. I'm not going to wait until midnight on amen, tomorrow night's watch night service. But right now on this Sunday, I just got a firm belief, amen, that God is not finished with me yet. That, that eyes haven't seen Elder McFarlane and ears haven't heard that the best is in store for me yet. For all the things that I've been through in 2018 only serves as an indication that God is up to something. And the devil is trying his very best to distract me and to stop me from walking into my destiny and walking into the purpose that God has for my life. But, but I wonder if there's any violent saints in the house of the Lord because the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and, and the violent is going to take it by force. Somebody needs to stand up on this Sunday amen and say it's the last Sunday of 2018 but I'm believing God that I'm going to walk into my promise that, that there's a land that's designed for my life that flows with milk and honey I'm walking into 2019 with a crush mentality that, that everything that God has for me I'm claiming it for my life can you say amen I believe we're going to walk into 2019 amen with a crushing mentality that 
amen, that we're going to walk into God's divine purpose and plan for our lives, that we're going to allow God's word, amen, not to just, amen, be something that we read from an open book or open up from an app in our mobile device, but it's going to be the word that's going to become a seed in our lives and become alive inside of us. I'm sick and tired of reading about all the miracles and all the blessings, amen, and all the wonders of what's happening overseas. I'm sick and tired of, of reading of what God is doing in other people's lives and other places around the world. I believe we serve a universal God and he's the same yesterday. Help me preach today and forevermore. And the Bible lets us know that greater work shall you do. So that lets us know that everything that we've witnessed and everything that we heard of and everything that we've seen in the past, we're living in the most important and vital and critical time and season in the church right now. And I believe that God is at the edge of his throne and he's waiting for us to say, come on, I want you to have it. I want you to experience it. I'm not going to live my life by accident anymore. I'm not going to live my life just to wake up and say, well, it's just another day and I'm just going to go by it no I'm walking in with intensity and I'm walking in with intention and I'm walking in with an expectation in my spirit as to God what are you going to do in my life today what are you going to have me to do for my are you with me today somebody hear me today let this word become a seed in your mind and tell you listen 2018 was the school was the hard knocks of school I had to go through the university of pain and suffering and loss and disappointment and mistakes and sorrow but I'm here standing on the last Sunday of this year saying I've learned my lesson and I believe God allowed us to go through all that we went through so that he can prepare us for what he has in store for our lives in the upcoming year this one if I can preach to somebody that believes and I'm walking in with expectation Look at somebody say I'm expecting God to do great things But in order for you and I to see that come to pass We must evaluate this year And identify areas where we have to grow Areas where you have room to grow When I was a child I spake as one I understood as one. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away those things. You see, hear me. 2019 is going to be a year where you're going to grow up. Boy, it's quiet right now. 2019 has got to be a year. It's, look at your name and say, it's time to grow up. It's yeah, it's time to grow up. Don't, don't offend them, but it's time to grow up. Let's, let's be honest this afternoon. We all experience a hiccup or two along the way, but growing up is a part of life. And you just can't jump and pick and choose which parts of, of being an adult you like and which ones you don't. No, there comes a point, ladies and gentlemen, where it's time to ditch the excuses. And it's time to woman up and man up and say, if God placed it in my life, then God has given me an assignment and a responsibility. Children have a tendency to look at and to always say, look at me. You, if you have any, if you have a child or if you have children, they always, you know, they could be on a bike and say, Dad, look at me go. Or they'll be on the swings and they say, Dad, look at me. Or Mom, look at me bounce. Or, or look at me swing. And, and, and such behavior is acceptable for children. Yet many adults spend their growing up years saying the same thing. I wish I had a witness here. Look at me drive my car. Look at, look at me work my nice job. Look at me make my money. Look at me. Look at me. And I believe the Holy Ghost on this last Sunday is saying, isn't it time that we all grow up? 
Yeah, isn't it time that we all grow up where where we were made to live? We are made to live and to glorify God that everything that He has given us and everything He has done for us, Amen. It's not supposed to put the the light on us, but it's supposed to put the light on God. I believe that we ought to grow up and stop being children and saying, "Look at me and look at the clothes that I wear and look at my wife and look at my husband and look at my bank account." No, no, no. Twenty nineteen. If God's gonna bless us and then God's going to give us uh, amen what we desire we got to walk and say look at God every time he blesses you on a job look at God every time he gives you a new car look at God every time you get a healing report look at God I just wonder if there's a 30 second praise break uh, in the house of the Lord right now uh, that you can look at 2018 uh, and say had it not been not for me uh, but for the Lord uh, who was on my side look at Give your neighbor a high five and say, look at God. Look at God. When I was down and out, he lifted me up. When I was sinking low, he lifted me up. Look at God. When I was getting ready to lose my mind, he was the lifter of my head. Look at God. I made it this far because of the grace and the mercy of God. Clap your hands if you've got a testimony. In 2018, look at God. And I've got news for somebody God ain't finished with you yet You're going to walk in 2019 Sister Kelly Everything that you lost All the attacks on your life And setbacks in your life Hear me somebody You're going to walk into the new year And you're going to say look at God God's getting ready to bust open some windows God's getting ready to open up some doors in your life I just went into somebody that believes What I'm saying That you will jump up on your feet and say I don't know about the neighbor sitting next to me but I know it's got my name on it I know what God has for me look at God God. I don't want to get excited before my time let me preach to you you may be seated you see church there are so many great lessons we all learn from life can i get a witness and if you learn from anything that happens to you you will discover that there is no such thing as mistakes only lessons to be learned life is not a checklist it's a practice the thing with knowledge is that it can decay if let if left ignored and that goes for anything Hear me, church, life's lessons are a beautiful gift, but they don't always come wrapped in shiny red bows. Sometimes tragedy, hear me, brings us wisdom. Sometimes joy does. Other times we stumble upon life changing lessons when we least expect. No matter how they come to us, life's lessons are invaluable and worth cherishing. And you must use them as a guide to live unashamedly without limits. And as we stand at the brink of a new year, we should reflect on all the closed doors in our lives and be thankful to God, not because of pride, incapacity, or arrogance, but simply because they led us nowhere. We live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where there are many cultural and personal and circumstantial obstacles that tend to stand in our way of anyone who wants to become mature in Christ. Yet without maturity, we cannot become all that God wants us to be. Neither can we know all that the Lord wants us to understand. And furthermore, we cannot do all that our Heavenly Father wants us to accomplish without ascending the ladders of biblical maturity. The Bible commands us that we must grow up into all aspects of into Christ. The holistic approach to maturity is a challenge for everyone who is serious about realizing their maximum potential. Growing up is a process. It's not going to take it's not going to be something done overnight. It's not something that you just, you know, flick on a light switch and then you grow. No, it is a process. And no one is born fully grown. 
Everyone comes into the world as an infant and progresses through different developmental stages until he reaches his adulthood. And the same is true when you become born again. It doesn't matter how old you are physically. When you accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you are a spiritual babe in Christ and you must learn to grow in the things that God has for you. Look in the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul states in the fourth chapter in verses 11 through 15, as I dissect this real quick before we go home today, Paul talks about the spiritual growth of every child of God. He says in Ephesians chapter four and verse number 11, and he referring to Jesus gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Here's why. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ, verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto, here it is, a perfect man. Unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, here it is, that we henceforth be no more children. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love that we may grow up into all things. Somebody say grow up. Somebody say in all things. We can't pick and choose what we want. Amen. If we're going to grow fully into the maturity of Jesus Christ, we've got to have all. We've got to accept all. It's going to take all the things that's going to allow us to grow up in all things, which is the head of even Christ. I want you to notice, church, in verse 15, that Paul tells the, the, um, the Christians in Ephesus to grow up in all things. Grow up up into him in all things and evidently Paul didn't think that the church of Ephesus had grown up yet he also said in verse 13 till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a somebody say it perfect man help me with the verses on the screen if you can till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man in the amplified bible this phrase is translated like this that we might arrive at really mature manhood Hear me somebody, I believe 2019 is going to be a year that we're all going to grow up. we all going to grow up spiritually. Nobody has ever come to a place where they've arrived. You haven't come to your last chapter yet. There are areas of our lives, hear me, let's be honest, that we all need changing and adjustment. We all need a tune-up and a checkup and an alignment. Yeah, we all need some growing up. This is why we come to church because church is not made up of perfect people and if we were perfect we didn't need to come to church today but we come with our issues help me we come with our mistakes and our drama and this is why when the enemy attacks you you don't stay home and have a pity party you don't quit praying and believe in God no you gotta run to the house of God because there's an altar there's a rock that you can fall on they're your refuge and strength he's your very present help in the time of trouble hear me this is the place where we all are going to mature in Christ this is the place where we're going to go from babe to childhood to manhood when I was a child I speak like one I walk like one I start like a child but in 2019 I feel like God is getting ready to allow me to see some things that's going to produce maturity God is getting ready. He's saying what I have for you. I've been on hold for too long. But I'm waiting for you to grow up. To put away some childish things. So that you can receive what he has for you. That we 
might arrive at manhood. Paul, hear me. Uh, he's encouraging us to reach to reach spiritually spiritual maturity. Somebody let's lift your hands and just reach for it right now in the spirit. Oh yeah. Somebody hear me. That's what our spirit needs to be in 2019. God, I don't, I'm sick and tired of having a pacifier in my mouth. I'm, I'm sick and tired of waiting for somebody to spoon feed me. No, no. I want to be at a place of spiritual maturity. No. Every time I come in the house of the Lord, my spirit wants to act like I'm reaching for something. No. Oh, I want my hands lifted high because God, I'm not satisfied where I am today. No. God, I'm hungry for more. Are you hearing me? Somebody needs to have in their spirit arms stretched out wide to say, God, no. 2008 18 was a great year I've seen some things I've been successful in some areas of my life but I believe you've got more in store for me in 2019 God what would you have me to do what would you have me to change about my life I want to reach for something more and greater spiritual maturity he's encouraging us to grow up Throughout the New Testament, we see striking similarities between spiritual and physical development. In fact, there are three stages of spiritual development that correspond to physical development. They are babyhood, childhood, and manhood. These are the three stages that God has us in whatever category we are. We, from babyhood to childhood to manhood. And even though a person can be born again as a child of God for many years, he can still be either a baby. Oh yeah. He can be in childhood stages of development in certain areas of his life. And as we take a look at each stage of spiritual development, you may see where you need to grow in certain areas of your life. Look at the babyhood stage. First Peter chapter 2 verse number 2. The Bible lets us know as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. You see newborn babes church require a lot of work. <laughs> they don't do much except eat and sleep. You have to do everything for them. You have to dress them. You have to feed them. You have to change their diapers and so forth. And they can't eat solid food. They can only digest their mother's milk or baby formula. And it's in the same way, church, that you can't expect young children of God to do for themselves. You see, you need to follow up with them after they come to church for the first time. You need to call them. You need to encourage them. They don't understand much about the things of God, so you have to spend a lot of time teaching and counseling them. Oh yes, they'll come crying on your so shoulder about everything. They don't have a lot of confidence in their own prayers, so they'll ask you every time to pray for them and to spend time with them. You have to carry them, so to speak, because... They don't know how much walk in their ways of God for themselves. And there comes a day, ladies and gentlemen, in all babies' lives, when they have to be weaned from their mother's milk. <laughs> Look at what Genesis chapter 21 verse number 8 says regarding Hagar and Ishmael's departure. The Bible says in Genesis 21, this, I get excited about this, in verse number 8, so the child grew. And was weaned. You didn't hear me. So the child grew. And was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast. On the same day that Isaac was weaned. Now I, I was troubled about this yesterday studying. Because I wonder why did Abraham throw a feast. When the child grew up and was weaned. From the. Uh, from the bottle. Why, how, why did Abraham throw a party? And, 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 and it, and it kind of brought me down memory lane. Because I, I, remember the, I remember the last bottle I had to wash. You don't, you don't have my testimony. I got four boys. and Oh, Lord. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I was the one mostly that used to scrub those bottles and you know this and they had different parts so you know you have to you have to open it up you had the bottle and then you had the and then you had the nipple part and then you had the lid and then you had the cover and you had to take the time out and you had this big old bowl that the sister Charlie used to have and and so you know as as constructive as she is and there was a certain way that you had to you had to brush it all up and then you had to wash it and then you had to lay it down to try it. and can you imagine four mouths Y'all not helping me preach. At the same time, the feet, Sister McCarthy, and every time they get a bottle, I used to pray, Lord, let's take the small bottles because the smaller the bottle, the easier it's to wash it. But, but when they had those big old bottles, you have, you have to get the big long brush and you have to scrub a little bit more. And I, I remember when Ethan was at the place, ah, uh, yeah, when he was getting ready to graduate from bottles. And I remember his first bowl of porridge. I, I had to take a lap around the house because in my spirit I got I got happy and I said to myself no more bottles to wash no more bottles to wash throw it away while we keeping it for throw it in the garbage we don't need it anymore they got teeth they can eat now they can swallow on their own and so the bible says that Abraham threw a feast I believe he got to a place Ayanna where he says thank you Jesus no more bottles to wash and I've come to tell you heaven is getting ready to throw some of you a party when you're getting ready to cross over to a new year I believe heaven is saying some of you you're getting ready to graduate from the bottle Lord I feel the Holy Ghost I believe that heaven is saying some of you you're going to walk into some new things you're going to walk into a year where you're getting ready to grow and heaven saying let's have a party because you're going to pray prayers that you never prayed you're going to be faithful like you've never been faithful you're going to worship like you've never worshipped you're going to live for God like you're going to live for God before is anybody ready God is getting ready to throw you a party because you're going from babyhood to manhood I'm going to put away child Somebody say it's party time. God's getting ready to celebrate your growth. There be somebody. God is getting ready to celebrate your growth. God is getting ready to celebrate your maturity. That eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. Somebody jump up on your feet real quick and say, Going back is not an option. Leaving the church is not an option. Going back to where I came is not an option. Going back to Egypt is not an option. New heights. I'm gaining. I'm going to grow deeper and further. God's throwing me a party because it's my growth day. It's a growing year. And God has something in store for my life. to help you because look at what verse look at what verse number 9 says <laughs> you got to see this verse because Sarah's son saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian which had been born unto Abraham and the Bible says mocking <laughs> another translation Pastor Romeo says that Ishmael laughed at the celebration Hear me, somebody. The devil is not going to be happy with your growth. There's always an Ishmael that will laugh at the growth of an Isaac. There's always an opposition. Somebody perhaps on the job or an unsafe relative. Somebody that just can't see you, can't stand to see you blessed. And can't stand to see you where you are. And this, they just can't figure it out. Because every time you lost. Every time you, you go through a mistake. Or go through a setback. That, that doesn't stop you from smiling. 
That doesn't stop you from, from praising the Lord. There's something about you that makes them scratch their head and say, why you're not weeping as we are supposed to weep? We, we don't operate like the world operates because as we said last week, Sunday, it's the joy of the Lord. And, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so in the midst of burying loved ones and in the midst of sickness and pain, we don't sorrow like how the world sorrows. No, because the joy that I have the world didn't give it to me and the world didn't take it can't take it away and I've come to let you know when God gets ready to throw you a growth party there's going to be an Ishmael that's going to laugh at you and it's going to wonder why the celebration there's a devil that can't stand to see you successful there's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour that's waiting for you to come down because he can't stand for God's people to grow he can't stand for God's people to be accomplished this is why he said kill that baby Jesus at the age of two years old lest if he grows up he's going to be who he says he's going to be he's going to grow up to open up blind eyes he's going to grow up to call Lazarus out of the grave he's going to grow up to turn water into wine he's gonna grow up to heal the sick and to raise the dead hear me there's a devil that's after you and he's saying I'm doing everything to stop your growth because he knows once you grow I feel like preaching he knows once you mature once you get at the place of manhood you're gonna be all that God wants you to be but I wanted to somebody here that I would like to stand up and say devil you can't stop my growth you can't stop what God has in store for me 2019 is my year shake somebody's hand like you're gonna shake it off and saying this next year is my year give somebody a high five tell them I'm growing in 2019 more anointing more power more favor more prayer more worship more consecration more message more more I've learned my lesson it's time to grow it's time to grow somebody by the hand real quick and say neighbor God has put on hold everything that he has for me long enough but 2019 is my year when I'm walking into his fullness 2019 is my year where I lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset me how many can determine I'm going to run this race with patience looking unto Jesus who's the author and the finisher of my faith give your neighbor a high five we're getting ready to close but look at somebody and say I've learned my lesson tell somebody else I've learned the hard way how to cry some tears how to lose some friends how to go through some hiccups but through it all it's made me stronger through it all let's go higher it's made me better and tell the devil no weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper tell your neighbor 2019 is the year you're growing tell them you're not going to be where you are today you're not going to be the same person that you are you're growing you're growing up when I was a child I spake like one I thought like 
one. But look at your neighbor and say, put it away. Put it away. Put away everything that's stopping you from growing. Put away everything that's stopping you from getting more of God. I'm getting ready to walk into my seas. Stay with me, I'm done. I've learned my lesson. God allowed me to be hurt. God allowed me to make some mistakes. God allowed some hiccups in the road. God allowed me to lose some friends. Whatever your experience was, God permitted it to happen. So we can all find ourselves in this moment in time on this last Sunday of the year. And before we cross over into a new year, we can say, I learned my lesson. Because if we can't get to a place where we say, I've learned my lesson, we're not ready to receive the, what's next for the new year. I've learned when I was in that childish mode when I fought like a child but here's the moment when I became a man you've got to get to a place in your spirituality in your life where you say but when I became a man What's expected from me was not what I was before. But what God expects from me is more. Hear me. 2019, there's a lot of things that God has in store for your life. But it's all predicated. Have you gotten to the place where you can take ownership to saying, when I became a man, when I became a woman, because if you can't say that, you're going to experience another year of childish lifestyles, mentality. You will never get to that place where God has more for you. Hear me as you stand to your feet and as I close. So much more to say. But the truth be told, Sister Reed, life is not easy. When you are pursuing something worthwhile and ready to learn from the best experiences. Some lessons, Danelle, can be learned without ever having to go through a traumatic experience. After all, common sense goes a long way and can spare you a lot of pain and heartache. However, there are some life lessons you have to learn the hard way great lessons or the greatest lessons in life are those we learn the hard way. Today, looking back at all that has happened in my life and in your life in 2018, you should feel nothing but gratitude. No matter how painful your experience was, It helped you to grow. And question, Stephanie, the system of values most people live by. Now you know it was all worth it because it contributed to my growth. I wonder if somebody can stand with me today on this last Sunday of the year and say, I've learned my lesson. Sometimes it was the hard way, but I learned. And when I learned, I've matured and I've grown. And now, God, I'm ready for what you have next for me. I wonder if eyes closed and head bows all over this building. I wonder if there's somebody, first of all, as our prayer team comes, that's here, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. 2018 has been one of those years for you of 
challenging moments and trying experiences. But through it all, you're here today, not by accident, not by just an invitation or a baby dedication, but in the spiritual realm, God has orchestrated and designed and destined for you to be here today to hear the word of the Lord. When I was a child, I spake like one, acted like one, lived like one, behaved like one. But when I got into manhood, I put those things away. Hear me, what God has for you that's next is sure. But can you put away childish things? Can you put away the excuses? Can you lay aside every weight? Can you stop saying, well, I'll come to church another time. Can you stop being in between? Can you stop being at the place of two opinions? Can you make up your mind? I'm going to be faithful in 2019. I'm going to live for God in 2019. I'm going to give God my all. Somebody that's been in the church and you've made every excuse as to why you can't serve or be involved. Occupied so much with the things of this life. Work so hard that you can't even give God some of your talent and your strengths. This is the year where we're going to grow. Because if we're going to have a thriving, powerful, revival, growing church, it's going to be made up of men and women that have grown up. We can't do business as usual. We can't live our lives as usual. We've got to get to a place where it's time to grow up. This altar is a unique altar call. It's for someone that's going to make the commitment to say, I'm ready to put away some childish things. If you've learned your lesson and you're ready for more and you're ready for the next, I'm inviting you to come out of your seat before we leave. I hope you come back tomorrow night for a wonderful watch night service. But I wonder if you can take the next couple of minutes to say, God, I'm making a commitment on this last Sunday of 2018. Say, God, I've learned I've learned my lesson. I've learned the hard way. But at the end of the day, I learned. My experiences taught me some valuable lessons in life. In you, I live. Move it, Abba. I'm inviting you to come if you are here without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you don't have a relationship with Christ. And you desire within yourself, you know what, I want to strengthen my walk with Christ. I want to... I want to make that commitment that I want to have a personal relationship with him. I, I'm inviting you to come. Don't be afraid. I, we've got loving people here that's wanting to pray for you, wanting to encourage you. I'm looking at a bunch of testimonies out there that down through the years, God's been good to you. January through December, this last Sunday of the year, is there anybody that would like to step out of their seat and say, Thank you, Lord, for keeping my life. Some of you should have been dead this year. Some of you should have lost more this year. Some of you have been through some tragic experiences this year. But you're a testimony of the fact that you're still alive and that you're still here. Come. Come on, let's talk to the Lord together. Let's talk to God together. Somebody needs to come and say, I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. God, I want more of you. Can you raise your hands all over this house right now? Let's begin to reach out to him. <laughs> I'm inviting a guest to come out of their seat. I want to pray for you today. I'm inviting a loved one, maybe a man. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Let's pray for you today before you walk out of here. Thank you, ma'am, for coming. Spirit of the Lord is drawing people. I, I know the Lord is here. He's talking to somebody here today. Don't, don't refuse what you feel in your heart and in your mind. Thank you, sir, for coming. I want to pray for you today. That's it. It's the last Sunday of 2018, folks. I'm telling you, some of you, you learned the hard way. You've been through financial crisis. You've been through marital problems. You've been through ups and downs all this year. You've learned some things this year. God wants to give you more. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. 
This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Yes, Lord. All that is within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, the moment I'm away, Lord, have your way. Lord, I give you my heart, yes, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, the moment I'm away, Lord, have your way. Anybody else that would like to come? I want to pray for you. Would you step out of your seat? Somebody that says, Pastor Jolly, would you pray for me? Maybe somebody's going to walk to your aisle and just pray for you before you walk out of here. But I'm telling you, we're all standing here today because we've learned our lesson. It's time to put away some childish things. It's time to lay aside every weight, put away the excuses. And say, God, I've learned my lesson. 2019 is going to be a different year for me. 2019 is not going to be the same as 2018. I'm not going to live my life the same way that I lived it. I'm not going to run anymore. I'm not going to make any excuses. For God, I live. And for God, I'm going to die. In you, Lord, I live. I move. And I have my being. Would you lift your hands one more time all across the building? Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. In the name of Jesus. Live for you alone. Every breath that I take. The moment I'm away. I just wonder if you can close your eyes and just lift your hands and right where you're standing can you pray and reach out to him right now right where you're standing if you can make it an altar for the next minute or two and say God I've heard your word Lord there's more that you're requiring of me and I pray God that you will help me this year Lord you've been so faithful you've been so kind I've gone through so much this year, but through it all, I'm still standing only because of your grace. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that as we get ready to cross into another year, that you will help every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Place your hand of mercy on us, oh God. Help us to get to a place where we acknowledge that we've learned we've acknowledged Lord God you that you have more for us you desire more of our lives you desire more commitment more faithfulness we declare in this service before we leave today God we're going to be more faithful we're going to be more committed we're going to love you more we're going to honor you more we're going to serve you more we're going to give
give more of our time, our talent, our treasures. 2018 was a life's lesson for us. Help us, oh God, to walk into the new year with greater, greater expectation that you're not finished with us. We desire us, so oh God, to have more. Help us to rid ourselves of sins. Every weight, Lord God. Anger and jealousy and bitterness. Things that we've been harboring in our hearts and our spirits. Set us free, oh God. By the power that's in your blood. Power that's in your name. I wonder if it's appropriate if you can just lay hands on the person that you're standing next to. Let's pray for each other right now. We're getting ready to leave. But I wonder if you can lay hands on somebody and strengthen somebody in the Lord right now. Come on, lift up somebody's hand in prayer. A brother to a brother, a sister to a sister today. God, that you would do a work in somebody's life. In the name of Jesus. Use us, mighty God. Put your hand on us. I've learned my lesson. Gone through enough. I've experienced so much. It's propelled me to my destiny. It's brought me to where I am in this time and season in you, oh God. It's growing up time. It's growing up. I was a child, I spake like a child. I thought like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I've learned my lesson in 2018. I'm walking into 2019 mature, growing in you. Take us from strength to strength. Take us from glory to glory. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my soul. something breaks pray until God touches you come on some of you are so reserved and so locked up in your spirit some of you can't even lift your hands and talk to the Lord right now come on somebody God's been good to you this year you need to open up your spirit and let him do a work in your life to you you're talking to us Lord you're talking to us today God Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ we pray for deliverance right now we pray for breakthroughs right now set the captive free today loose 
your people's minds freely to worship you. Some of you, you're one hallelujah away from your breakthrough. You're one praise from a touch from God. You're one more praise from your breakthrough today. You're at the brink of God doing something miraculous in your life. Somebody, I dare you to open your mouth. I dare you to open up your mouth today. Throughout this year, God been faithful you can't walk out of here the same way that you came open your mouth and give it praise oh. hey. yeah 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 i feel fresh oil in the house i've learned my lesson it's time to grow i had to learn the hard way this year I feel something breaking in the church. I feel something breaking in the church. desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby that henceforth we be no more children Lorraine God wants us to grow I've learned my lesson this year next year is a year that I'm going to grow Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for our first time guests. Most of all, thank you for your presence. Your anointing is here. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. As we leave from this place, but not from your presence, go with us today pray that this word Lord will become seed in our spirits and it will take root in our hearts and it will bear much fruit and God you're requiring more of us that there are areas of our lives that we need to make changes and adjustments alignments by enemies necessary so that we can fully grow in maturity in Christ. We declare that 2019 is the year that we grow. We declare that 2019 won't be like 2018. You're requiring more of us. More prayer, more fasting. More the dedication to your word and to your church. You're requiring more of us, oh God. That we all come to the full stature in Christ that growth that maturity thank you Lord God for allowing us to go through this year for keeping us we stand here on this last Sunday of 2018 saying that we're putting away childish things 
we've learned our lesson. We're ready to grow. We're ready to have more that you have in store for us. Put your hands on us today. Bring us back tomorrow night, the last night of 2018, ringing in the new year with a praise. We say thank you, Lord. We lift our hands and we say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're about to do in our lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to give somebody the biggest hug. Tell somebody, I learned my lesson this year. 2019 is the year that we all grow. Tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, the sanctuary will be open at 9.30 for prayer. Let's come on time. Bring a friend. Let's pack the house out. It's going to be a great service. I hope you can share with us tomorrow night as we ring in 2019 together. God bless you. Thank you for coming to the sanctuary.